was doing, traipsing around the Middle East, coordinating these things. He was taunting. He mm -hmm. was taunting the Americans yeah. for the past like, whatever, how many years under Obama, saying yeah, the Americans yeah. know where I'm not. They're gonna kill me. And yeah. Obama was yeah. weak, and okay. now we've got a strong sure. president. And so, so we killed. So here's the difference. You're sad about Let me ask you this. Let me ask you about this. I'm not sad about us killing terrorists. I reject that characterization. I am not sad about us killing terrorists. The United States has the moral right to kill anyone who tries to kill Americans. The question is whether we should, for practical reasons, do that. For example, right, there's the a moral case don't. to put a bullet in the back of Vladimir Putin's head. Is there not? He's exactly. obviously an anti-American force in the exactly. world today. He's, he's annexed Crimea. He threatens the United States with nuclear weapons. Like we don't kill him, though, because there's a very important bullet. practical reason that we don't kill him, right? Russia is strong and can and can hurt us. No, so the question is, sure. to the extent but that we go and do American something to somebody, we're doing it because I we're assuming that they're weak and that they can't hurt us. Why not? Why not? So why, why do we come to that assumption? Go after Putin? He was doing traipsing around the Middle East. You hear this moral right assessment? Um, I don't care about shit like that. I'm more, I'm, I'm more interested in the last thing he said, um, and it's whether or not killing certain people causes blowback for the U.S. I just don't know in terms of whether or not killing that guy, that that Iranian dude, Soleimani, was a good idea or not. I'm not sure. It seems strange to say that killing him is going to invite blowback when that guy was already involved in building out so many major networks that have already killed so many Americans. Like it seems like he's already like involved in killing Americans. Like. I mean, like, what are they gonna do? Like, kill more America? I mean, <laughs> it seems like that's already what he's up to. Um, I mean, personally, I think that it, it was a more successful route. You know, like, I don't like, um, I don't like lecture fans' characterization that strength means killing people and asserting, like, that type of strong military projection. I don't think that's the only way to show strength as a country. I, I think that, like, the diplomatic normalization route with Iran would have been way fucking cooler than just assassinating a bunch of people, but. Aaron says he'll no longer follow the nuke deal because of the attack. Oh well. Seems like that was inevitable anyway, but Yeah, in terms of like if you want to like moral right to kill him or whatever, that's pretty unquestionable. America absolutely had a right to kill the Soleimani dude. One hundred percent. Not even close. Anybody that says any otherwise is fucking ridiculous. Now, whether or not pragmatically, in a uh, in a real politics sense, whether or not in, in that sense was it an intelligent strike, I, that's, I guess that's to be determined, huh? What did he do that made it, like, morally, like, justified to kill him? Um, he was on Twitter fucking talking up so much fucking shit, dude. That's all, no, I'm just kidding. Um, so, Soleimani has a, a very deep history in Iran as being, like, a central coordinator for, um, an Iranian branch of their military called the Quds Force, which is, like, an... Um, so the term is expeditionary force, meaning they have like members all over the world. It's in the tens of thousands, mm -hmm. I think. And what he has been involved in is coordinating relationships between multiple countries, like high level actors across multiple countries and across multiple terror networks in order mm -hmm. to extend Iran's influence, military or diplomatic or political, um, into other countries where otherwise you would think Iran wouldn't have a presence. So like he's been involved in a lot of like um, the establishment of like Hezbollah, um, in Lebanon, he's been involved in um, like different embassy attacks against different Americans. He's been involved in types of explosive devices or forces that have been killing Americans in Iraq. Um, he's been involved in assisting Assad in Syria, like a ton of shit. This guy is like a legend in terms of his ability to network and make shit happen across the world. He's a very, very, very smart guy. Um, very mm -hmm. rich history, like roots everywhere, has been like single handedly establishing like Iranian foreign presence. An, an insane guy. Um, and basically, um, we've had the opportunity. We, we've worked with them in the past. We've worked against them in the past. It just depends on who our enemy is at any particular point in time. Mm -hmm. um, we had the opportunity to kill him under Bush and Obama. Those administrations decided not to. Then we had the opportunity to kill him under Trump, and that um, administration decided to pull the trigger. And but yeah, the, our, our, ju our the stated justification for killing him is because he's been directly involved in um, in attacks on like U.S. embassies and stuff. That have killed like American lives, and then I guess attacking American soldiers as well. Oh wow! Yeah, which is true, one hundred percent. That's like undeniable. Some people might pretend that's not true, but that that's undeniably true. But like, yeah. 
but the um the, the okay. yeah the pressing question in my opinion is like whether or not that serves american interests or not like is it going to invite retaliatory action from iran or any iranian like loyal allies or whatever anything like that or is it you know mm -hmm. is the real question true i didn't know if that's uh what he did i didn't really understand i knew uh the statement that the states had come out with but mm -hmm. Not specifically. Supposedly, the amount of pull such influence Soleimani had in Iran was insane. I read that he was a borderline um, cult figure. Well, yeah, but not even just in Iran. Supposedly, he had a huge hand in a lot of what happened in a lot of countries, like in Iraq as well, that he was in, in charge of like setting up that new leadership and everything. Um, like when we installed the new government, he was a big proponent of Maliki. Um, he's like pulling the strings behind a lot of different events going on around the world. He I live in Egypt, and I'm genuinely surprised how many people knew who Soleimani was before it happened. Oh, in Iran? No one knew the fuck. No one knew anything about him in the West. But I lied. What? He doesn't like any of those things. Oh, what he? Like... Sorry, I was looking at what he sells. Um, so he loves diamonds, iridium bars, pumpkins, void egg, void mayonnaise, and wild horseradish. Diamonds, it is. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Real quick. I'm sorry. Hold on. When, when I say nobody, who, nobody in the West knew who he was, I mean like average, like civilians. Like we don't talk about him on like Western news state, or maybe they do on the BBC or some shit. I'm not talking about like U.S. intelligence or anything. Everybody in terms of intelligence in the West knew who Soleimani was. Um, sorry. Yeah. So when does it get to the point that America is allowed to kill at will in other sovereign nations? Um, I get the guy was a Terry and he deserved it. However, the power to kill someone who threatens us anyway, the world is pretty empirical. Huh? Um, I think the U.S. arguably already has the ability to do that, right? Like, ha ha wasn't there a big deal about us killing, what was it, like a U.S. citizen in another country? Um, like, I, I don't know. Um, the, the IRGC, the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps, IRGC, right? Um, was already designated. Oh, shit. I'm watching the cutscene for the community oh, center. Oh, me too. Okay. Um, so arguably, like, I mean, I, I guess, like, U.S. laid out the justifications for it and did it, but, yeah. Aww. Oh, yeah, that's true. We also snuck into Pakistan, and we killed Bin Laden without them having any fucking idea. That was a SEAL Team 6 mission. Holy shit. Yeah, the, the biggest, the scariest thing is going to be Iraq's position with the United States. I think it would be really scary for U.S. foreign interest, and I don't know the situation on the ground as much, but to see like a unified Syria, Iraq, and um, Iran, it would be very ironic if Soleimani's death unified those three countries, considering that was a purpose of his entire life. Like the great, what do they call it? The, that great firewall or that great, there was like a name for it. Like... The problem is Iraq can't do line with Iran. Why not? Because of the immense hatred of Iraqis with Iran? Hmm, maybe. Sorry. That's literally not true. Yeah, I wouldn't believe that. I think enough external pressure, um, like when you've got like the whole fucking Gulf and all like the, all the Sunni states and Israel and everybody else, like I, I, I don't know if I believe that. That, that Iraq wouldn't find itself. Some I know that the Iran-Iraq war was very bloody. Of logic but I mean, that was- harem. You have to keep in mind that was under Saddam Hussein, right? And that leader's gone. Um, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't feel like that's true. I feel like the Iraqi citizens could be chill with the Iranian ones. Um, should I do reasonable or do we fight with each other? What do you um, think? Um, fight with each other. <laughs> Jesus. This is classic. A man taking the... Oh, you, with a woman making the choice both. behind him. Hmm. He gave you the hero trophy. Hmm. Why aren't we pushing for regime change in Iran? Um. Well, we kind of do. We, we've done it with the sanctions. But for whatever reason, I don't think Iran's leadership has ever felt the pressure from the citizens as much. There hasn't been like any big uprisings or whatever. Yeah, I know there, are, there have been protests in Iran, but not. it hasn't been to the point to where you, we could like go in and coup or whatever. But we'll, we'll, I mean, it might get to that point. We'll see. Flipping Iran is going to be very hard, though. I don't, I don't know, because, like, damn. But, like, Iran and Iraq, uniting is, like, the U.S. and USSR allying, which require a threat on the level of Nazi Germany. Well, aren't Iraq and Iran both majority, um, like, Shia? What is it? What is Iran's majority? They're, they're, like, the supreme leader of the Ayatollah or whatever is, like, a Shia. Ira Iraq, no. Iraq is majority Shia, isn't it? Aren't they? Or at least a plurality Shia. Hold on, you guys are making me look this up. Iraq, Shia, Sunni, population. 
The Muslim population of Iraq is 64 to 66 percent Shia. What do you guys? What the fuck are you guys talking about? Iraq, Iraq is majority Shia. You maybe you're confused because the previous government led by Saddam Hussein was like a Sunni kind of government. Maybe that's why you're confused. But the the Shias have always been like, uh, um, or not have always, but the, the Shia have, are the majority in Iraq. Majority, but not a super majority. What does that even mean? Why are you saying that? First of all, 66% is two thirds, which some people would consider a super majority. So fuck off. There's like seven different things wrong with this sentence. I don't even know where to start. So firstly,